After a mild November and December, January is shaping up to be a fairly typical January for here in Chicago. Early this week, Arctic air from the north drove the temp down to 0 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 18 Celsius, and it's expected to get even colder this weekend. This is the biggest test of our winter garden so far this year. Today we'll take a look at how our crops are holding up, but first I'll share temperature data that will demonstrate the benefits of growing under two layers of protection in cold climates during the winter. For 14 consecutive days, I recorded the maximum and minimum temperatures outside, inside the hoop house, and inside this cold frame. Here in blue you see the maximum and minimum outside temperatures recorded over the two-week period. The thick line on top reflects the max temps, and the thin line on the bottom reflects the min temps. The highest temperature outside was 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lowest was zero. The last three days in particular were very cold. When we add the max and min hoop house temps in green, you can see it was consistently warmer in the hoop house. The highest temperature recorded was 69.3 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lowest was 9.7. The difference in max temps was most significant on sunny days. After a number of cloudy days, on the other hand, you can see how the hoop house max temps moved much closer to the outside temps. So clearly it was warmer inside the hoop house than it was outside. But did the cold frames inside the hoop house provide an additional benefit? Let's take a look. When we add the cold frame temps in red, you can clearly see that the second layer of protection made a significant difference. The cold frame max temps were consistently higher than hoop house temps, except over a couple very overcast days when they were about the same. The difference was most significant on sunny days, but would have been even greater if the cold frames weren't vented on some days to prevent overheating. The minimum temperatures were higher in the cold frame than in the hoop house without exception, and cold frame temps stayed above freezing except for the three coldest nights. The lowest temp in the cold frame was 20.9 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20.9 degrees warmer than the outside low of zero that day, and 11.2 degrees warmer than the hoop house minimum. Now let's take a look at the average maximum and minimum temperatures outside, inside the hoop house, and in a cold frame. To see if these temperatures are consistent with Elliot Coleman's observation that each layer of protection effectively moves the garden one and a half zones to the south. The average outside high of 32 and low of 19.9 are typical for this time of year here in zone 5. But the temperatures in the hoop house are closer to what you might see in zone 6b with an average high of 50.8 and low of 26. Finally, the temps in the cold frame represent another move to the south. An average high of 58.5 and low of 31.5 sound just about right for many Zone 8 regions at this time of year. So clearly, two layers of protection provide a significant advantage. But how did our plants hold up to three days with temperatures near zero degrees Fahrenheit? I'm happy to say almost all of our plants survived and we continue to regularly harvest crops from our winter garden. Some, like Georgia Collard's Swiss chard and perpetual spinach, were clearly stressed by the cold, but are still alive in producing harvests. Other crops seem to have been completely unfazed by the cold. I'm very pleased with how well our tree collards are doing. If we're able to overwinter them, we'll have a new edible perennial in our garden. Dinosaur kale, mustard greens, and tatsoi are also doing fine and Claytonia, which is very cold hardy, is thriving. Unfortunately, we did lose some of our lettuce plants this week, but I don't think it was because of the cold. The morning after our zero degree low, the cold frames were frozen shut and I wasn't able to vent them. That day turned out to be very sunny, and as a result, the temperature inside the cold frame rose quite quickly. And I believe that's what killed some of our lettuce plants. This is a great example of how having an automated venting system can be very helpful. We couldn't be happier with how our winter garden is doing. Even after extreme cold and nearly daily harvests, there's still a lot growing. I expect growth will slow down quite a bit over the next month or so, but by late February it should start to pick up again. And by early spring, the garden will be exploding with new growth. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.